Yeah, very gloomy skies out there. A 300 foot overcast ceiling. So we're not able to see much from the air. What's causing it? Let's take a look at the US map. This is a general overview showing the conditions that we have going on. We've had this very strong cold front moving out of the central US into Texas. And it has made a significant advance into New Mexico. Weather there has been pretty remarkable. We've had snow this afternoon in the El Paso area. There's been snow all the way up to Albuquerque through the entire Rio Grande Valley of New Mexico, and temperatures have been down into the 20s in that region. Across Texas, not much southward advance, and that's because we've got a very deep southwesterly flow, and when that's in place, these fronts just do not move very far southeast. However, it has slid down the front side of the Rockies into Old Mexico, so we've seen some very cold temperatures in that part of the country there. Still not much going on in the southeastern U.S., and we just got this large, I guess what we call prevailing high, covering the entire U.S., 1028 millibars on that. So this gloomy stratus overcast, what's causing that? Well, we're here in Texas, right around this area here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a sounding that shows the atmospheric profile here. And this shows the classic frontal inversion right in here. You can see that as we go up, the red line representing temperature moves over to the right. And along with that, the dew point line moves with it. So this air mass is topping out in our area at about 3,000 feet, what's happening is we've got a lot of tropical moisture right above the frontal surface. There's this area of 50 degree dew points. Now this tropical layer above and the cold air below, they do interact some. And what we see is some moisture being carried down into the cold air and and because that cold layer cannot hold much moisture, we get saturation very quickly and we form cloud material all the way down almost to the surface. And there's how it looks from above. The vast majority of that low overcast is going to be all of this white stuff. But you can see that above that, there's these middle and higher elements. Now, some of that is going to be shower activity. And that's one way you can bring and that's one way you can bring moisture down into the lower levels through precipitation. And out there in New Mexico, yeah, you can see the spin to the air right there. That's a mid and upper level low pressure area. So that's going to be the main upper level low. So it's not going to be over until that thing passes. And then down there in the Gulf, we've got more trouble heading for the U.S. That's Tropical Storm Zeta, which has crossed the Yucatan and it has emerged out into the central Gulf. The latest information on Zeta shows it's not a particularly strong storm, 55 knots on that, 985 millibars. The track has not changed much, maybe a very slight eastward shift. That puts New Orleans on the west side of the path, which of course is good news for them. However, this is of more concern for Biloxi and Gulfport, since they're going to be on the eastern side with more potential for storm surge. Peak surge looking for 5 to 8 feet, and that's mostly going to be there in the Biloxi-Gulfport area. And the official forecast carrying that into the coastal region as a Category 1 hurricane. And just as a reminder, the effects of the hurricane, not only wind, but of course, storm surge. And that'll probably be our main concern. Landfall, that's going to be tomorrow evening, late afternoon and evening, and the European model going Pretty much for the same scenario, maybe slightly slower on that. European model going for a landfall at about 6 to 7 p.m. 
and it looks like the worst of it will be hitting the Mississippi coastline about 9 to 10 p.m. And very rapid advance inland, so by dawn it's already going to be northwest of Atlanta. Here's a quick look at the pattern looking at the 300 millibar chart. So this is up near the top of the troposphere. This is showing that upper level low there over Arizona. This represents a huge chunk of cold air across the southern Rockies. But if you look at the wind components, there is just not much southward transport of cold air for, out of Canada. In fact, that pretty much just clears up there as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. So what we're going to be contending with is this cutoff low pulling out into Texas, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. So we should see the weather pattern get kind of active there over the next day or two. Maybe a chance for some showers and thunderstorms. And then that low opens up into the Appalachians around Friday. And then we're going to see some weather on the East Coast for Friday. And then things should quiet down. The next weather maker is going to be this large wave moving through the western Canadian provinces over the weekend. And you can see that trough does deepen. And there's going to be some potential here for weather on Sunday. If we go back to basics, there's the trough. There's the ridge. The jet is located something like that right there. And naturally, that's going to put the weather systems kind of like that right there. So definitely an active frontal system in the northeast U.S. later this weekend. Then we're going to see this big ridge build in. We do have a little bit of a split flow pattern, but uh, I don't see any big problems there. Another trough working on shore around mid to late next week, affecting mostly the northern plains. And then we see this large Rex block building up. Now, this is kind of ominous because of the location where it's building. Height rises in Alaska usually mean displacement of cold air through Canada from the Arctic into the northern U.S. So this could set the stage for a polar outbreak, perhaps a very significant one around the 10th through the 15th. This is really far out. So take that with a grain of salt. Now, one problem is in the first week of November in the Western Arctic Ocean, conditions are warmer than usual. Part of that is because the ice pack is not built back in the way it normally does this time of year. However, it does look like we see a lot of cold air production in central Canada, and that could be all we need to get a cold air outbreak around the second week of November. But that's looking in the crystal ball. There's conditions in the southwestern U.S. this afternoon. Cold in Texas and New Mexico and Oklahoma and slightly warmer in Arizona and California. Conditions have moderated. We have, remember yesterday, I don't know if, if you were with us on the supporter stream yesterday, we were talking about that huge windstorm that was going down the Colorado River Basin. That has definitely let off and temperatures are starting to, to come back up there. Also, the Santa Ana winds, those are dying out. And LAX returning to westerly flow. In New Mexico, it looks like we've got this polar front pretty much sitting right up on the Continental Divide. The air west of there, mostly of Pacific origin. Some heavy modification over the Great Basin area. But this stuff here, this is originating more from the northern plains and kind of banking up against the higher terrain right there. With that southwesterly flow, we're getting that snowfall developing in that region. Pretty much snow all the way from Deming across El Paso all the way to Fort Stockton. 31 degrees there. And further north, a little freezing rain being reported around Lubbock. That's indicating that there is some warmer air working in maybe up to around the 850 to 700 millibar level. So we're not seeing a pure cold precipitation process going on in that region. 
the Santa Ana winds were causing problems with fires in the mountains east of Anaheim, out in this area right here, and also north of the city of Los Angeles. Looks like they've got that mostly under control right now. So we're returning to a northerly fall off behind that cutoff flow over New Mexico. And as far as Texas and Oklahoma, we've already talked about the weather in that region. Pretty nice covering of snow in Colorado, up into Wyoming and Nebraska. In the southeastern U.S., a warm pattern prevailing, but we can see storm anvils in northern Florida there. And down to the south, there comes the approach of Tropical Storm Zeta. If we look at the surface map, there it is, a vast plume of southerly flow heading northward in advance of Tropical Storm Zeta. If we looked at the in fact, we can go ahead and do that. The precipitable water should show that tropical plume. Values there ranging over two inches in much of the eastern gulf. And if we roll that forward, you can see that spreading northward into Alabama and Mississippi. And there's likely going to be some interaction with that frontal boundary across Louisiana, Mississippi, and locations westward. And further west, there's that frontal boundary. It's not making much progress south, except in South Texas there. Winds out of the north, all the way down into the Monterey area of Mexico. And further east, there's some evidence of cold air damming in Virginia and North Carolina. You can see that slight area of high pressure there around Roanoke. And conditions to the south of there, pretty mild with lots of 70s. There's conditions in the northeastern U.S. The main feature, of course, is that large ridge extending up from Kansas up to Quebec. So that's given us a northerly component all the way from New England down the Appalachians. And as we go further west, we get into some of that precip there. That's the so-called overrunning due to the southerly component in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. On the satellite, it's pretty clear we've got jet stream energy working through the Midwest into the northeastern U.S. So that's going to amplify a lot of the vertical motion. And as a result, we're going to get patches of showers here and there. Also, this is bringing up precipitable water. And there it is. We can see that precipitable water there, the strong Southwesterly winds bringing that moisture up into the Midwest. I can drop a sounding on Indianapolis. And we can see extensive moisture all the way from 5,000 up to about 25, 30,000 feet. So quite a bit of depth of humid air. And finally, the northwestern U.S. this afternoon. Downslope flow, strong westerlies and Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Montana. There it is. And with the increase in the upper level westerly component, we're seeing the lee side trough becoming reestablished. Down to the south, the remainder of that cold air kind of locked into some of the valleys, sitting over the Great Basin region, modifying very slowly, and returning to a typical fall pattern very slowly. Temperatures have really come up. Lots of 50s showing up in the western U.S. And there's how it looks. A lot of snow east of the Continental Divide and certainly along it too. And also in southwestern Wyoming. Looks like they've got some patches of snow in that region too. So that area is gradually transitioning. And that's all we have for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for watching. And just a reminder, if you are able to support us, that would be greatly appreciated. And that will help keep these episodes coming out. Thank you, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.